Tewufos Mata, or Theophilios, Abuna Theophilios Mata. He was the second patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church after the Autocephalus, after Abuna Basilios. So we have Abuna Theophilios or Tewuflos Bamarina or Begiz um, as a good as sim to Wuflos, but that comes from like the Copto Greek Theophilios or like God's love in a sense, the love of God, God's love. Anyway, we know that Theophilios he didn't bless the emperor on that fateful day during the time that's known as the fall what they call the fall of the monarchy which in actuality is not so much the fall of the king of kings in the monarchy in that sense but it has become more the fall of Ethiopia so that's something that has to be clarified as well when we speak about Ethiopian um, communist or socialist revolution of 1970s most look at it as the fall of this tyrant and despot and, and emperor and all of this that they want to say a lot of that's the propaganda that's the hype that goes on but when you're beyond those kind of name callings you know the emperor has a despot a tyrant he stole money he starved people he fed animals but didn't feed the people I mean all those stories and hid money in Swiss bank accounts that was what was used at that time if you notice a lot of folks don't really talk about those issues so much anymore a lot of those rumors and those slanders because they were only necessary at that time in order to kill the king in order for Ethiopia in a sense to uh, commit suicide you know to crucify the emperor even the similarities between the end of the Messiah Christ life and the end of the emperor the king of kings in Ethiopia are so similar you know and the the characteristics are so much one and the same and it's very interesting that so-called Christian people haven't seen it for themselves and that makes me question the Christianity you understand and they're you know they're blind they're blind to that and that is based on what has happened with the church and the schisms in the church and the whole war against the true Ethiopian Hebrew messianic faith in other words the true faith of Christ that was preserved in Ethiopia and that was preserved amongst that particular remnant but on Abuna Theophilios on the matter of Abuna Theophilios like we have this picture here that I know a lot of people probably have seen this picture before on the internet where Abuna Theophilios he kisses Negusenegest ring upon his enthronement as patriarch or the second patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church at Holy Trinity Cathedral in 1971. This particular picture right here is that particular history. So the history behind this picture is the history behind Abuna Theophilios or Tewuflos. Now based on the information concerning the revolution where Abuna Theophilios where he refused to bless the emperor let's pull that information up we, we touched on that before but I think it's important for us to touch on that one more time let's see okay here's some information that's on the internet concerning okay let's okay the fall the fall after months of military coordinating committee the Dargu placing members of the Aklilu Hapta world and in the Dalakacho Mekonin governments in prison along with the senior military officers nobility and regional governors and officials it became clear that the days of the Emperor on the throne were numbered the press was full of vitriol and scathing attacks on the fallen governments, on the corruption and incompetence of the officials, and even on the character and the performance of Negusa Negest Rasacho, the King of Kings himself. The attacks on the emperor ranged from critics that stated his reign had been too long, 
that he should have abdicated in favor of his son or one of his grandsons long ago, that he was too old and too senile to hold state responsibility, to outright attacks on his character labeling him a thief and a despot. The daily attacks eroded the emperor's once vast popularity and laid the groundwork for the inevitable. On September 11th, 1974, Ethiopians celebrated their New Year, welcoming the year 1967 according to their version of the Julian calendar. During the day, truckloads of soldiers spread out from the barracks of the 4th Division and took up strategic positions all over the capital. Tanks and armored personnel carriers rolled down the streets of Addis Ababa and jeeps with mounted machine guns took up guard outside banks, ministries, palaces, and important junctions in the city. Soldiers wore stickers with the slogan, Ethiopia Tikdem, Ethiopia before all, on their helmets. Rumors swept the city that Princess Tanyane Work and several other members of the Emperor's immediate family had been placed under arrest. Nothing in the press indicated what exactly was going on. In fact, the Emperor's daughter, Princess Tanyane Work, his daughter in law, Princess Sarah, Duchess of Hara, and all their children were placed under arrest in Addis Ababa. In Tigray, the hereditary Prince Ras Mengesha Siyum had already taken to the hills with a band of followers. But at Mekele's castle, his wife Princess Ida Desta, daughter of Princess Tenyane Work, along with her daughter and the children of her sister Princess Seble, were arrested and put on a plane back to Addis Ababa. The imperial family was systematically being rounded up. Rumors swept the city, but nothing official was announced. Late in the day, as was traditional, the patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, Abuna Theophilios, gave his yearly New Year's address on national television and radio. In his speech, the patriarch likened Ethiopia to a ship in stormy seas, charting a new path into the future. At the end of the speech, for the first time ever, he failed to bless the Emperor Nugusa Negesk, Adamawi Haile Selassie, and the Imperial family, and instead wished success to the mission of the Coordinating Committee. For the Emperor's loyalists, it was a jarring and shocking development. In 1960, Abuna Basilios had condemned any attempt to dethrone the man anointed by the church and stood firm against the Imperial Guard coup attempt. That his successor should make a statement that seemed to abandon the emperor to his fate was a shock. Now that's the particular point that we bring into evidence when we say that Abuna Tewuflos or Theophilios denied and betrayed the emperor. Now coupled with the picture where upon his enthronement as archbishop where he kisses the ring of the emperor, you know, you put those two things together with the end of the Messiah's three and a half year ministry and you see that same betrayal. The same betrayal. Even though Abuna to Wuflos on many other grounds has done certain works which we have to admit that were good works. You understand? And you can understand why he was chosen to be the second patriarch of the Ethiopian church. However, his betrayal, you understand, and then his subsequent, you know, blessing the Derg, then going against the Derg, and then allegedly being murdered and executed by the Derg. So this same Tewuflos betrayed the emperor, went along with the Derg, went along with the conspirators, 
and then went against them and then got executed by them and we're supposed to feel some sort of sadness or sorrow no what we're supposed to do is to get the lesson I mean the lesson is very very obvious you understand that you reap what you sow and that the chickens in other words have come home to roost you understand and this is what we had originally wanted to share with ones and ones concerning 1974 and getting a better picture you understand of what happened because up until now we have heard a lot of rumors about what happened in 1974 who did what what allegedly happened to the emperor how many times they they attempted to kill him how many times they say they killed him how many times they say his burial but yet the witnesses also of the emperor lives what has died is Ethiopia died you understand?